Howdy watch fans, Lux Neophyte here with episode 7, featuring my first plunge into the daunting world of vintage watches with a new purchase. This episode is a bit of history of the Swiss-Belgian watch brand Rodania and my 1968 Rodania watch review. So stick around! So this episode is a bit of sharing on my part, what I learned after my first purchase of a vintage Swiss and Belgian watch, uh, 1968 Rodania. So chances are you're not too familiar with the Rodania brand. Uh, don't worry, I was not too familiar with it either. So according to the Rodania website, the company was founded as Rodana in the Swiss canton of Bern, one of the 26 cantons or states that make up the Swiss Confederation. Now, sources online differ on whether the company was started in the municipality of Grenchen or Lengnau, but this might make sense given that the two municipalities sit adjacent to each other. The Rodania website goes on to cite that the company was started by a Fritz Baumgartner but other sources seem to point to the company being started by a Hans Baumgartner. So quickly, right off the bat, we can see that something is a bit off with the origin story for Rodania. But whether it's Fritz or Hans, one part of the theory that seems to be fairly consistent is that by the late 40s, Rodania broadens its market by opening distribution centers in Caracas, Montreal, New York, Brussels, and London, with Brussels becoming the international sales and distribution headquarters by 1951. It's at this time that Mr. Baumgartner taps a Swiss man living in Belgium to take the lead in international marketing efforts, a Manfred Aebi. It's Mr. Aebi that brought Rodania's most memorable legacies into life in 1954, as Rodania became entwined in cycling and cycling events. And it's here that we need to take a moment to explain a bit more of how much Rodania and Belgium cycling became attached at the hip. You see, it was Mr. Aby's brilliance that gave us the most memorable and stickiest watch advert the cycling world has ever seen with the Rodania lead car. Don't know what I'm talking about? Well, don't worry, as you are not alone. For most of us non-Belgians, the Rodania name and its relationship to Belgian cycling and cycling in general is a bit of a mystery, but it's such a unique and interesting story. You see, going back to Mr. Aebi, 1957 was the introduction of the Rodania lead car and the famous Rodania jingle associated with cycling. The lead car was hard to miss. It had a giant wristwatch mounted on top and speakers blasting out the four note jingle for Rodania. Aside from being whimsical and a spectacle, the car had the exact purpose of signaling cycling event onlookers that the lead cycling pack was soon approaching. According to sources on the internet, the four note jingle was inspired by the famous four notes of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5. To take a look, or to take a listen, uh, to see if this is true, here's Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, Op. 67. And now, here's Rodania's jingle. So what do you think? Can you hear a similarity? Was it inspiration? Or was it a complete knockoff? So based on an article by Graham Healy on the bikecomesfirst.com website, while the Rodania jingle creates excitement for the people watching the cycling event, and imagine this, the poor driver of the Rodania pace car can hear the jingle upwards of 5,400 times during the cycling event. Rodania. 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 
5,400 times. And think about that for a moment. How much money would make it worth your time? Now, Rodania sponsored cyclists and events through the 1950s and 60s, but Rodania's cycling legacy took a leap forward in the 1970s, with one of cycling's true greats becoming a brand ambassador. None other than the great Eddie Merckx. Eddie could be seen in Rodania adverts and according to a great article on fratellowatches.com, Eddie had his own version of the Permadate watch model by Rodania. And it's here I just want to take a quick tangent. Uh, it's important to note how big Medix was to cycling. Medix logged in 525 victories in cycling grand tours and classics during his 60s and 70s career. He holds the record for the most tour stages won in the Tour de France with 34, and he's won the whole thing five times over. He is, by any measure, one of the cycling greats. Now back to Rodania's history. By 1974, IAB took over the reins for the company and Rodania's headquarters moved to Belgium. In 2007, the company was succeeded by the Belgian watch group Montebi. In 2015, Rodania was acquired by another Belgian investor, Mr. Philippe Krakko. And just as recently as the summer of 2020, Rodania was once again purchased by new investors from the Swiss and Belgian watch industry, most notably Christian Fromherz, CEO of the Geneva Watch Group and the Swiss company Romer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a quick trip through Rodania history. And now we move to the watch that kicked off all of this digging Enter my 1968 Rodania wristwatch powered by a 25 Joule AS1903 movement. Now chatting to a few more experienced watch collectors around the watch dens on the internet, I know a neophyte's jump into the world of vintage watches can be fraught with mistakes, pitfalls, and regrets. But thankfully, I was able to chat up a trustworthy seller and ask some important questions after researching Rodania and I've been pretty satisfied with the purchase so far. Let's start with the basics. In terms of measurements, the Rodania is a modest 35 millimeters wide, 37.5 with the crown. It's 40 millimeters lug to lug and has an 18 millimeter lug width. It's definitely on the slimmer side, but 10.5 millimeters thick thanks to its domed plexiglass crystal. The watch is on the light side. With its light Milanese mesh strap, it's about 57 grams. And the Rodania is light on the wrist and quite easy to wear. In line with the smaller watches of the era, the watch initially felt unusually small, especially since I was used to something around 40 millimeters. But all I really needed was a bit more wrist time and I was easily able to get used to the size. So the watch is by no means pristine. But that's not something we should expect from vintage watches, no? The 1968 Rodania's charms begins with the silver dial, which is domed or cambered to give the watch a nice depth. And of course, the nicely applied indices capped off by the unique applied Rodania logo. The applied Rodania logo is apparently a watch face with the symmetrical hour and minutes hands at 10 and 2 o'clock, with a thinner second hands at 6 o'clock. In general, it looks like an upside down Mercedes Benz logo, if not for the differences in the thickness of the second hand. There's a charming date window. It's framed and reminds me of a porthole window with a flattened oval shape. The dial denotes the Swiss movement and of course the tritium radioluminescent pips used on the hour markers and the hands. The watch dial is showing its age a bit. 52 years old, it has a few freckled spots on the face here and there, but that gives it a nice touch, I think. So the 1968 Rodania is powered by an automatic movement by the Ashield company, the AS1903. Now, looking around the many movement archive sites on the internet shows that the 1903 is a 25 joule Inca block automatic movement with a 44 hour power reserve and running at a frequency of 21,600 vibrations per hour or 3 hertz. 
Something I learned is that the Inca block is a shock dampening design meant to prevent the balance staff from breaking in the watch after a shock. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. So I put the 1968 Rodania on the time grapher and the movement comes to about 0.6 milliseconds beat error. It gains about 11 seconds a day uh, with an amplitude of 277 degrees which um, I looked up on the internet and it seems to be pretty darn good for a watch that was made in 1968. While I don't usually make a habit of removing the case and looking at the movement, I wanted to take a deeper look at the AS1903. It is definitely a workhorse movement with no embellishment to be found. In fact, I had a hard time trying to see how the movement is identified as an AS movement. After scouring the movement, I finally saw the AS and the 1902-1903 stamp behind the balance wheel. Now, I don't know about you, but I think these types of moments where you're scouring around a movement, uh, it's really what makes watch collecting such an interesting thing. So, all in all, I really enjoyed my first foray into the vintage watch category. I found the watch to be the perfect impetus to looking a bit closer at a lesser-known Swiss-Belgian watch company and its great links to cycling and Belgian watch history. Yes, the watch is a little bit more delicate than my other watches. It shuns water and forces me to be a little bit more careful when washing my hands while wearing it. And it definitely doesn't have the gleam or shine of a newly minted watch. But given its history, and the unique elements it holds from a bygone era. This watch has been a joy to own and a great addition to the collection. So, if you have any great insights into Rodania or vintage watch collecting, please share in the comments below. And remember, whether it's a shiny new watch or one with a bit more character, a few scratches, and a lot of history, be proud and enjoy what's on your wrist. You be you. And remember, in the mortal words of the great Humpty Hump of the digital underground, do what you like. Peace.